Welcome to the Bushy Black Brother Network. Good evening and welcome to Repo Rethink Politics. And you're listening to the sounds of Ziri Production, which is our producer, music man, that actually lays down a lot of tracks for us for our podcast. But we're back again, the Repo Crew, where we talk about politics locally, international, and anywhere that we can find something to talk about that blows our mind. But I'm here with my two co-hosts. And first up the bat is E. What's going on, brother? Whatever. You know, just trying to figure out uh, the Knicks to get that first pick. But, you know, that's this. Uh, that's I, know. Right. I know. I know. By the time you hear this, you know. You It'll know. be done. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the fucking Knicks balls be dropping. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's take a score for this one. <laughs> yeah, we shall see. And all the co-hosts, Chaz, what's the business, dude? What's up, what's up? I'm actually feeling good today. It was nice. The weather wasn't too cold. And um, I don't think there wasn't too much controversy. This was like a medium. This was a Diet Coke controversy day. Not too much. Really? Okay. I don't I don't unless think I'm, so. Unless, oh, was I numb to it? Uh-oh. I guess I'm about to find out. I don't think so. <laughs> so we, I wanted to get back to uh, it's, it's a couple of things that we... Uh, kind of was reviewing back in from the previous Mueller case but uh i want to go straight to (laughs) international news because i I really want to get y'all opinion on that because there's really three different issues that's kind of outstanding um and uh y'all can jump in but i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna throw them quickly out uh venezuela um iran and north korea so, mm. so you get you got three distraction. I think this is the week of the distraction. Oh, oh, and I yeah. forgot. And China, don't oh, forget no. China. <laughs> no, but Mike also wasn't Russia. It's always pa- Russia, though. Mike. Didn't Pompey meet with Russia today or yesterday or? Diplomat? Some yeah, somebody rolled up in it, but the Russian okay. thing is a conversation. They even had a phone call the other day. So, oh, this ongoing. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. this is ongoing. But mm-hmm. these are like some things that um, the Venezuela is kind of ongoing because they're trying to get him out of office. Yeah. Um, and they tried to get the United States because Trump is a fool and he would bring troops over there. So you got other nations that's trying to edge him on to mm-hmm. do military action. And it's the same thing that's going on in Iran. And then yeah. the China issue is um, the trade issue, which edging them on and oh, say keep doing. It. Yeah, but yeah. that's a direct impact to us. So I, 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 if I if I may, I think I want to take a stab at it. Not because I'm super smart, but because I just heard it on NPR. Somebody <laughs> regurgitate this shit on your eyes. So. I got you. I got you. Of course, <laughs> of course, sources say. Um, well, first, if you have if you have, if any sort of financials. I think it was um, yesterday. Mm-hmm. The the market just dropped like two percent. Or it was, was like six hundred points. Yeah, it was like yeah. damn. So the China thing really impacted everybody. So I was kind of, I didn't even want to look at my four hundred one k because yep. I was like, I uh, nah. I, I didn't. I, let me wait a week and then mm-hmm. I'll look at my investments. Um, so the China thing is is definitely self inflicted. And I mean, if you're the Chinese. You know the, it, I get people are mad at what China has been doing the last couple of years with the money manipulation. People feel like the 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 Chinese currency has been undervalued on purpose mm-hmm. to drive up more Chinese products. You know, being bought, but there's a way to go about it. So now it's like okay, my, my, I'm feeling hit by this. For the Iranian thing, um, they're saying the United States is trying to rile, um while I ran up into, you know, just goading, goading them into a fight, goading them into a fight. So, you know, putting the, um, I forget what they're called. I want to, the Revolutionary Guard on the terror list, mm-hmm. pulling out of the um, the deal, yeah, the nuclear deal, and a lot of the other, like, just really the rhetoric, just talking shit. Yep. And it's, it's just kind of, yeah, just raising the tensions. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, those are the things... 
Oh, and just to go back to Venezuela, this feels like another proxy war because the U.S. wants somebody, wants person A, and yeah. mm. Russia wants person B. Mm. So it's kind of like, where, where have we seen that before? So and the Cuban Missile all, Crisis. <laughs> right. So these are, these are, they feel like the same thing, but different because right. we've heard these talking points before. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, why is this a problem now? Well, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. Let's let's I got you because I I got I got my my opinion on all of these two. But uh, let's 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 go around the uh, table. What I want to hear I want to hear just what's what, what you got? Let's yeah, what's the quick and dirty? Okay, the quick and dirty. So Ve Venezuela has one of the biggest oil reserves in the world, mm -hmm. in the world, and we're about to have. Uh, uh, a tax or an upsurp of the way gasoline is going to be. They're going to do 2%. And this is Iran pushing that. So wherever you can get the oil from, you need to have a certain control. So a self going to war with Venezuela, we can do these proxy wars to be able to say, if I'm friends with this guy, I can get the oil that I need. So it's, it's an, it's an underlying um, energy issue. But they trying to make it as a democratic issue. And this is where this this one is like really complicated, but they're trying to stay away from it as, you know, let's do some diplomatic things, which they never do. Um, they because don't know how to do that. yet they just they just don't. So now they gotta have like that the big mustache guy, Bolton. He has to go yeah, out and, uh, uh, and really actually do some diplomatic that. things because he's he's one of the but diplomats. He may not be he that good. Talk. Yeah, but yeah, he but he's knowledgeable he with the system. He may not do a good job, but who else is going to go over there? Because Pompeo, he's an idiot. He's just an empty suit, man, that says, go over there and tell him what I want you to tell him. Yeah, but mustache, man, that's just, <laughs> I don't know. That's just like sending a pastor to, I don't know. Like don't the pastor don't need he doesn't need to be the DJ at a strip club. No, like not two, at the strip two club. Different skill sets. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, I'm sending a mustache man is it's just. Well, isn't oh, fuck my start a war? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Bol Bolton's the one that likes to to, to start the war. Talk shit. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a warmonger. Yeah, he's one yeah. of those guys. But no, Bolton is the dude who be like he shoot. They're like, oh, he had a knife. He had a gun. Mm -hmm. You know, he's mm -hmm. some of them. He was reaching. He was reaching. Yeah, you, you know. saw it. You saw it. So, yeah, so that's the Venezuela thing. So that's that's what kind of got me with that. And you said with Iran, part of the Iran deal is this is Saudi Arabia and Israel that's ratcheting up a lot of stuff with the United States because it wasn't even we wasn't even involved with that. We just said, fuck them. We're not dealing with you. We moving from the, um, the Iranian nuclear deal and then the Saudis and and the Israelis say, hey, they sending people here to Syria. They're killing our people. You know what? And we was out in the sea and they 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 took one of our ships or something. And Iran was like, yo, we're not doing shit. So stop putting our name in this. And they constantly now the United States is making, you know, idle threats. But it's it's not from us. It's from those allies of the Trump the deal to be able to say look we're gonna have to do something military towards them and in retaliation there's like a fox guy who said we should go to war with them anyway because they raising gas prices on us which is like yeah. are you fucking crazy but we in that era that people say things ridiculous but people believe it and say I don't want my gas to go up so let's just go to war ignorance yeah. just ignorance yeah. that's that flexing muscle kind of thing the old school way of, mm -hmm. so we're going backwards it's the yeah exactly that's what all this is and you and then you were talking about the oil money mm -hmm. venezuela i was struggling to say that but it, it's just everything every tactic that the trump administration uses is everything we used to do like 90s on back or the 80s you know mm -hmm. 70 i mean hell you know all the conversations with russia you would think we're in the cold war yeah you know we're not even talking about the actual um cyber security issues you know yeah that's attacking but, us today you know what i mean exactly yeah current shoes mm -hmm. so yeah. with the china deal and i'm gonna tell you and i couldn't wait Chaz. so my 401k lost twelve thousand dollars 
That was yesterday. Then I was like, man, I can't keep wait, looking wait, at wait, this wait, shit. Wait, 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 Say that one more time. 12,000. A lot? Yeah. In one day. Yep. Damn. One day. One fucking day. And all my other stocks went down, too. But you know what? When you when you play the stock market, you play the long game on that. But with my 401k, I don't. Those are very conservative. I try to be as conservative as possible and not at all conservative or moderate. I don't go high. But when your moderate goes down that much, that that shows it's a problem. So and goods and services, I can delay buying another washing machine. I can delay another TV or even a phone. Some of those things I really don't I don't care about. But overall, it scared the market. And then when China said, oh, we're going to play that fucking game. Here's some things that we're going to do. So if we're going tit for tat, and this is the one thing, I'm not sure if you heard this, but this is the one thing that really bothers me. Since the soybeans, and they can't buy those, uh, Trump said they're going to give the farmers another check again. So they're trying to get $15 billion to get the farmers another check and say, hey, 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 we're going to help you. So this is the second time they're trying to do this, which is self-inflicted shit that we're doing. See, why is that not talked about? Why is that like, why is that accepted socialism? But other stuff is just, oh, I don't know. I just wish things are just such an eye of the beholder. You know, it just depends mm-hmm. who does it. You know yeah. what I mean? I who, who's it's, the loudest? Really you know what I mean? Who's the loudest? Yeah. And um, that's just crazy to me. Um, well, uh, this might be more of an E question. E, mm-hmm. you, you familiar with Colin Quinn? Mm, yeah, uh, the name sounds familiar. Well, he I'm has that show. He's a, he actually has the um, he he's the first comedian to have a um, comedy special on CNN, Red State Blue State, and mm-hmm. he um was I'm I really wanted to see it live in New York, but I just wasn't able to make it up there during the show's run. Oh uh, yeah, but okay. basically his what he's what he's trying to say is um he says uh, the United States should break up. And his his take is, is like what? Europe, like Europe isn't one country; it's multiple countries. Mm. The USSR used to be one thing, but now it's like multiple things. And what he's saying is kind of like kind okay, of interesting. Just you know, like what the hell does um, Minnesota have in common with? You know, it's just we're, we're we're different. So I was I'm just when you when you're saying this uh, in terms of like why is it like why why can Trump like why are we fighting for health care versus we're gonna write a check for farmers just and it's just such a loyal a blind following and is you know Obama wants something oh socialism and da 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 it's just he's demonized but Trump is just such a eh, whatever he's, he's a, a I, he, he's a divider that's that's the difference so I actually find that kind of interesting dividing or well, not dividing or I guess separating the country. But I don't I think that's not a bad idea. I just don't think it's necessary. You know, like we can the whole point of the president or the government in general is to keep the the states united. So the fact that Trump is in office and his the, the problem that we have with him is that he can't bring people together and he's actually dividing. It just it's almost like it makes that that solution easier to be done, right? That idea of separating Minnesota or separating San Francisco from, uh, uh, I don't know, Kansas, you know, mm-hmm. or different states, you know, that have totally different ideas of what the country should be is Texas from everyone else. I don't, I don't, I, I mean, I just like that idea that you brought that up because um, it's a good discussion, but that, I think that by itself explains the problem with all, with all the, the issues with the Trump administration. But I mean, they keep, that, they're just pushing all these agendas that, that like, I think the problem is even the average American doesn't really agree with, you know? So that's, that's partially the issue right now. This it's, it's complicated, but I, I actually kind of like that discussion though. The, the only thing I, because when you, when you mentioned the Trump thing, uh, when Mike mentioned the Trump, uh, you know, for the farmers, yeah. it just made me, it made me think about what he said. Because I've been watching interviews about this special and things like that. And mm-hmm. one of the things Colin Quinn says about the show and just talking about politics in general is he what I appreciate about it is he goes after both sides. Because sometimes we do feel like, 
on the liberal side is it, it is very if you say anything other than a certain agreed upon you know language or point of view oh you're mm-hmm. you, you know you're kicked out you're you're not this kind of i mean we saw last year hillary versus sanders there there are hardcore um sanders people who are you know a more progressive who just did not fuck with hillary and, and like vice versa because mm-hmm. like in on the liberal side there's like very much several points of view and it's very like don't say this blah 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 we all know the college campuses mm-hmm. don't invite this person to campus and on the right side I mean, they're fucking crazy, but just on a different way. <laughs> so I feel like we just don't, we don't appreciate everyone's the, the irony ins- all, insanity. Like, yeah, like right. we're, the country is not well, but just because someone has schizophrenia, another person has depression, doesn't mm-hmm. mean one is better than the other. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. Right. And they all should be treated. I can have, yeah. yeah, just because I can have scissors and you can drive doesn't mean that we're both well. <laughs> 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 you know, we're you. both not well. So, so you know. but I want to go to your question because I, I really think when you said that, it just put a light bulb in my head, too. Even though officially we're not separated, but well, we, we actually off. are because, because, you know, the East France. Coast yeah. is really a, a, a portion that's separate from the Midwest, which is the flyover states. And then you got the West Coast, which is has a totally different way how they want to be governed. So it's almost separated in, you can probably say four because the South has its own way too. Because you got the Northeast. Quadrants. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it can be split in that way because if you look at the voting block, it's it's split that way. Now, officially, can we do it? Eh. Why not? Because it's called the United States, not brought, the Quadrant States. No, 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 no. See, I brought this up. What I like about this show is I think he's approaching it from a realistic perspective. Mm-hmm. My my approach was, and a lot of people has mentioned this idea before, is fuck the states. Let's <clears throat> let the cities be the anchors. <laughs> so New York is the Northeast. <clears throat> Atlanta is the Southeast. Chicago is the Midwest. California, we'll just say L.A. and San Fran runs the West Coast and everything anchors around that. So I'm not going to Seattle. I'm going to Los Angelesville. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) So I'm just, for me, I feel like the cities are just more, I don't want to say influential, but it's more the, I mean, let's look at it back in the day. Like Virginia, that was the capital. Like, I I forget. When there's 13 colonies, wasn't mm-hmm. like Virginia the colony of the United States, or it was I one forget. of the first ones. But, mm-hmm. yeah. but you know, one of the more populous. I mean, where the people are is you know London. That's because where the people are back in the day in the 1800s. Mm-hmm. No one gave a fuck about York or whatever the fuck. <laughs> but you know, you're talking about the highly populated areas, mm-hmm. which is ma- like majority. I don't know any other uh, city, but they're pretty much Democrat. Mm-hmm. So every Every big main city is is pretty much a Democrat. And that's that's just... why the quadrants is more. It makes more sense. But it's. But I mean, it's, so us, you you gave autonomy to these states as well as cities and counties mm-hmm. and wherever you go, no one's going to give that up. But why? they're just not. Why would I give it up? Because to okay. be ruled by someone All else. Right. So if they said, if they said, um, Macon is going to be the, I was like, fuck, no, it ain't going to be Macon. Oh, the new Atlanta. (laughs) No, but that's going to be, that's going to be the city that runs Georgia and the Southern district. Fuck no. Are you crazy? Wait, for for the audience that doesn't know anything about that, Macon, what's. Was What's making equal? Is it blowing up or something? Or? <laughs> no, no. Okay. All right. Sounding no. Making is south of Atlanta, but <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not very progressive down there. Oh, okay. um, but it's closer <laughs> to the rural areas that actually take the majority of the votes and everything mm-hmm. in Georgia. Jamie. So yeah, so. If they make a decision and it's not what you want, how are you going to take that, Jazz? So there's two. Even though you said the big cities, what if they say, nope, not those, it's going to be these? 
So that's, there's two things. So one, the, the obvious thing is we just the status quo continues. That's the most realistic. Mm-hmm. No major changes to the Constitution. And what are we going to see in 2020? I mean, is it are we going to see more Democrats? Are we going to see because we have more gridlock, then it's just going to just be more unsustainable. The United States is going to be less safe because our government isn't running at its optimal optimal level. But Chaz, and, we, we said this on the other podcast. Yeah. We had a lot of Trump voters that realize now, oh, shit, this guy's fucking crazy. But we got to see what happens in 2020. I mean, so I, I get that. But, you know, uh, I'm. Let's say a war. I'm I'm just I'm skeptical. Okay. So People, a war. A war can change that. Um the economy wow. is still doing okay, but for some people. Yeah, for some it's, people. It's, it's great for white col- white collar professional workers. Professional there's, workers. So there's a lot of turnover if yeah. you're a professional. But if you're blue collar, I mean, what are you gonna do? So blue collar mm-hmm. jobs are leaving. Because he promised them these factories will come back, and, and they're not. And mm-hmm. even when he showed up and said, I made them stay, they turned around and left. Yeah. So that's, my, that's what I'm saying. So just so why would they go Republican then? So to your point, if you got these Democrats who's coming in and say, see, he, didn't, he promised that, but I'm here because now. Democrats are dumb. A lot of, <laughs> look at some new asshole jumped in the race yesterday. <laughs> So why, like, why he got to be an asshole, man? <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> He's an. Asshole. I don't. I'm just. I don't, I don't know. It's just. It's like it's turned into like the Bachelor or some. It's just. Yeah. All, like you know, I don't know. I don't, America. I don't, think, I don't think that's a bad thing, though. It, I mean, it, it lets you know that anyone could be president right now. Yeah. Trump, Trump proved that already that you can get an idiot out mm-hmm. there. Unfortunately, it turned into the like, most stereotypical white. Uh, you know, boss, asshole, uh, racist. I mean, it's just you name it. He, he. That's what he pushed. He's the worst. That's how he yeah. won. I don't. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't see the problem with a bunch of people joining and trying to win the whole thing. It's okay, just, so let me. There's no message right now. You know, well, here's no here's what I'll say. Let me. Well, I'll just I'll say, let if we continue at this current pace, my worst case scenario is we have a repeat of 2016. But this, but you, there is no pace right now because it, it's going to fix itself. It's like the playoffs. It's, it's we I haven't get even it. gotten to the playoffs. Yet, I get you know? it. I, what I'm this regular season. I get it. For the the it's final not brackets that. will be it's drawn. Exhibition right now. I don't even think okay. it's the regular season. Mm-hmm. I guess what I'm saying is, what if we get to a candidate, uh-huh. candidates, and it's Trump. Let's say Trump wins out the Republican. He beats those other people. Mm-hmm. And then it's Trump versus someone. And we have the same issues we had in 2016 in terms of quote unquote electability. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, I, I'm just being really facetious. I don't think that's going to happen. But we didn't think 2016 was going to happen. So yeah, well, but but, we can, but you you did know people didn't like Hillary, regardless. Yeah, you knew, knew that. You yeah. absolutely knew. We all knew that. Yeah. So, so I, even though this guy was the worst. So you're saying no matter what. The United States doesn't need to break up. We, we let's stay together because, obviously, like I guess I'm saying, the status quo is will work because where, where we're at right now is not the new normal, and we're yeah. gonna reset back to yes where we need to be. I believe I so, think, but I'm still skeptical. If, yeah, go I ahead, think, e, finish. E, even if the Republicans win, I think it would reset, but I don't think it'd reset with, with Trump again. Yeah, but Mike Pence. Guys like that exist. He ain't, he ain't no, but, I, but, but he's not going to run, though. No, but I'm saying, but Mitch McConnell, I, I guess what I'm saying, yeah. from my perspective, is one of these. So is, I don't want to talk about Mitch McConnell in two, three years, but I feel like I, I will because yeah. he's going to. Because he's still going to be there. Yeah. A lot of these old, they're just. So just from a high level perspective of. Um, ongoing politics, ongoing politicians, people mm-hmm. running almost unopposed, all the money going into politics. Like, like, like I mean, like we just talked about. I mean, mm-hmm. we just talked about Russia, a troublesome Latin government, quote unquote, um, mm-hmm. Iran, North Korea. It's like, right. is this 2004 all over again? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This could be from the Bush administration or talking points from the Obama administration, even. 
So, I, I mean, you can argue Trump created at least half of the I, stuff true. that's going on. It's just it for my my um my persistence. Actually, almost all of them except me. Yeah, that's true. All of them. My persistence <laughs> to be how okay. How will the partisanship stop? When will be? When will as Americans as from politicians be um, more partisan? Like Mike says, is it, will it be a war? Will it, no. will it get to that point where we like? I don't want to have a war just to people to be reasonable and talk to each other. No, nah, I, I don't think it would be a war. I think the war is worst case scenario. And I, I mean, unless you're talking about a civil war. I mean, <laughs> I don't think, no, think no, it would no. be like we, having a war outside, like another country kind of deal. We're so you don't, in you a don't, war. Yeah, so you don't think so? No. E, I'm serious. That. Even with well, the Mike, Iran thing, because. Mike, but ahead. we're already in war. Yeah. Does Afghanistan not matter? No, it no. doesn't. It doesn't. It has no relevance. <laughs> Because the military is his own entity and they're funding that regardless. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We have outside wars that we're part of that's just being funded be because mm -hmm. the distraction and everything is currently here. And what I was saying with the war between the three branches is, you know, the executive, which is funny to me. So I'm going to tell you all this, which made me once again, learn more politics. I didn't realize the Justice Department was fully under the executive branch. I did not know the power of the ju the, the the justice as opposed to the judicial was under the executive branch. And if that guy controls the police and the army and all of that, that's a fucking problem. And that's where he's trying to place people in place to say that ultimate prop ultimate power really is in the hands of the president which is the executive branch as opposed to the checks and balances and not fully just throw that in there go ahead not fully because because it's not fully to, because it has to be approved to, right he, 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 well not approved okay so it looks it's it's essentially congress and the president they have equal power but the president is like it the president makes the decisions, right? And then mm -hmm. Congress is to check the balances. Right. The, so it's, so yeah, the, um, as the commander in chief, Trump can start the war himself, but then Congress can jump in and then, and then shut that down based off of votes. They can make that happen. So, so let me give you an example. Uh, mm -hmm. The border, you know, there's troops down there, right? Okay. What are they doing? There's military troops. Like They're building. You got the <laughs> Army Corps that's down there, but supporting the Army Corps, you have other military um, entities that's down there. Now, he's using that under the guise of construction, but he's using Army in a civilian factor. And the law, and then we mentioned this before, was I think it's uh, Corpus Home. I forget the name of it, but you can't use military to police civilian activity. Um, and he's trying to do that because he has access to the, to the justice as well as the, the, the military. But I hear what you're saying, but the, the executive still checks the Congress because Congress yeah. can't pass a law unless he signs it. And if it's, unless they get, what is it? Um, Two thirds, or three thirds, seventy-five percent, or sixty-five percent, and then they can overrule his veto. Right. But through the Senate, I think it is too. Yeah. Which is the problem. But that's the problem because you got, you know, it's a, it's, it's close, but they still can pass things because they're just going with what the president wants as well. So the danger of this president gaining more power and using that executive branches and the cabinets to do what he wants and saying, I'm not going to do this. And now it's being flooded into the judicial to me is one of the craziest things I've ever seen. And just going back into history to see how Nixon and Spiro Agnew did that. Then you can see that these crazy other ones who knew politics was using it in a smart way, but still got caught, but he's doing everything. So upfront, that is, it's kind of like, damn, is he doing something wrong? Yes, he is. And he's doing it in front of you, but you can't do anything about it because 
he has no morals. Other people are like, man, I shouldn't have done that. That that's you know what? I'm I'm messing the country up. He doesn't care about the country. So this is where his strengths come from for being selfish and uh megomaniac. That's where his strength comes from because he cares about no one and he has no shame in anything that he does and that's the danger. But E, I still didn't get your input on the <laughs> foreign policy stuff. Says so you see all of that's going on, which is what what is the hot topic that you see that's the one that's going to um, actually affect us because I, I see that Iran is a possible confrontation. I'm, I'm, I don't want to say war because I'm not, I'm not really there for the war, but I, I do feel there's going to be some confrontation or the China thing that won't be settled because they supposed to meet next month. And he keeps going around and say, Oh yeah, we, everything's going to be fine. But the Chinese is like, man, I'm not giving in the shit that y'all do. I, I actually think that, the Chinese, the the Chinese situation is actually the probably the worst one because I, I, I look at the Iran issue as more of like just posturing or just flexing muscles, and I think Iran's just trying to, you know, just trying to show that they're not they're not going to take this because it was it started out where the, you know the U.S. left the whole Iran deal, and then mm-hmm. and then if I understand of what's happening that some other countries backed out too because of you know trump said if you work with them then we're gonna we're not gonna be able to work with you and then other mm-hmm. you know basically threatening the countries so other countries backed out so it's basically uh pissing off iran even though I, uh, europe if i understand right is still in the agreement um they honor I, I think it. that yeah well I, I think that's i think that whole thing is just kind of like you know tactic tactics that you know, military tactics to kind of show I'm not playing around, yada, yada. You know, it's just talk right now. I don't really think, you know, I don't think Iran's about that smoke, you know. I know they talk. <laughs> I know they can sit down. They're not going to win that shit, though. No, you no. Know, unless they got no. Russia behind them. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. Okay. That's a whole other issue. So I actually think the Chinese issue, because it's not war. This is economics. This is, uh, this is you know, talking about tariffs, talking about the whole deal. Imports, and how exports. everything's going to mm-hmm. work. I, just, I think and what you just said about our 401k, like, I think um, what's not being talked about, like the farm industry mm-hmm. um, getting pissed off, like the agriculture of the, of the country is like pissed at Trump. And those are Trump voters. Um, I think what's actually hurt going to hurt us the most is China. You know, I don't even think it's Russia. I don't think it's Iran. I don't think it, I, I don't think it's North Korea. I don't think it's a lot. I think China is. One of those countries, man, I, like, I mean, forget the debts that we have with them. Mm-hmm. You know, they're modernizing their military. They're modernizing everything. They're just growing like, I mean, China's been doing that for decades. But, yep. I mean, if they win this, this little back and forth that Trump's, Trump started, it's just going to fuck us up even more. Because we're already kind of behind a lot with, with them. I mean, not everything, because, you know. The, but a lot. The history of the U.S. But we're, he's, he, what's the word? He's, he's, he's. He's bringing us back. He's um, it's almost like a setback that he's going to create right now with yep. all this. When well, really you don't I need mean, to get into it's, this. It's leverage. Like if you, if like you, you win, I actually, I, I let me just say this real quick, real quick, because you're right. It's, it's leverage, but I think it's leverage that um, like it's almost like it's daddy's money, right? So it's like he's like, well, we're the U.S. and I got all this money, you know, I'm gonna do this, and it's like, like bro, like you can do that. But like that, you don't have any like like you're not the leverage. Right. You're not smart enough to make this work the way you want it to work. That's, you know what I'm trying yeah. to say? Yeah. yeah. And we have oh, we're losing leverage. Yeah. Any leverage that we had that we maybe had is gone because if I let's say, it's, I mean I mean reality. If someone who who's a little broker to me, but maybe they lend me money over the years, um, and then. I start talking shit, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> and then they start raising prices and talking more shit, and maybe I'm a little grimy, I do shit here and there, but you know, but it's like when the time comes, like five, ten years from now, twenty years, you know, we don't, you, you just, you, you, soft power and hard power is just good. You don't, you just don't fuck that up for no reason, and it's just, I feel like it's just being squandered for no gain. I don't. I don't see any gain. You know what I'm saying? The guy's a bully. 
So <laughs> that's what he's used to doing. He's thinking this bravado is going to make people back down. But he doesn't realize he's not in New York City and he's dealing with a, a mayor yeah. or 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 a local congressman or alderman. He's dealing with countries. And these countries have relationships with the United States. It was respected before, but now he's teaching them maybe we should have never fucking depended on the United States. Because remember, what's his, what's yeah. his name from Germany said that. We, we yep. need to stop depending on others to manage our business. Just in yep. case they switch up on that ass. Yeah. but That's what's happening right now, right? But he's ruined it. He, he has ruined that. And the Chinese is kind of like, yeah, you are consumers, but you ain't going to talk shit to me. Back to what your point, like you said, I mean, um, Chaz, I lend you money. And you starting to talk shit to me? I'm going to be like, yo, where my money at, dude? Look, man, I'm going to pay you when I pay you. Okay, I got you. So, yeah, hey, so could I, I need to buy some. You can't buy it at my store. Damn, you're the only one that got it. Nope. Can't buy it here. Where my money at, dude? Mm-hmm. And you like, oh, shit. So can we talk about this? No, I'm not ready to talk. I'm not ready to talk now because you thought you was fucking bad. But now, uh-uh, I don't want to talk. And, you, and they're doing that to China. And China is investing in the world where... Mm-hmm. The United States is pulling back from the world heavily, so it's just a perf- its the perfect storm for fuckery, <laughs> global fuckery, straight fuckery. And yep, and we're and we're seeing it. So, <laughs> I guess just going back to my point, I, I think about that's why I really want to watch that special, mm-hmm. um, uh, and I want to talk about it the next time, we, you know, the, the next time we do the podcast because I I think about it like this. I mean, Europe is. You know, France, Germany, um, the Netherlands, you know, these combination. But we don't it's not like just the United the United States. You know, it's we're one block of, pe- you know, but we're, it's different cultures of different people. Mm-hmm. So my thing is. Realistically, I mean, um, and I, I don't is, you know, I don't know if the disconnect is with the politicians or the people, but. When you just see certain things like, um, I mean, we're just seeing like weird shit like here in Georgia, even mm-hmm. like why the they 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 just passed the abortion bill. Like, why? Wow. Well, yeah. Just just yeah. Uh, Mike, was, was you know, up, you know, yeah. the um, what was it? The the heartbeat bill or some shit. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I mean, this <laughs> and maybe you know how people used to be dancing back in the day, and they do the little heart like ah, <laughs> yeah, the, ah, ah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, that's, <laughs> and that's illegal. The pop lock, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, so kind of like, like you know, I don't know. That's Texas, oh no, Ohio, Ohio, and Alabama. Just, so, I'm do you do like, you realize part of that law? Is if a woman goes to another state and get an abortion, she still can be prosecuted when she comes back. But how how do they know? They checking records. Like how? Well, why is that when you okay? initially, you know, if you get in some prenatal stuff, and see, and this is where you know we lost our our privacy. You know what I'm saying? Because when you give these 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 information out, and you go to the local hospital or you do anything, now the government, and this is where they say, I don't want the government in my business. But yet you want the government in your business because the government allows you to have an abortion. And now that they're doing locally, you can't supersede anything that we say because it's going to go all the way back up to the Supreme Court. But then he put his people in there to say, no, I don't believe in abortion. And if it has a heartbeat, it's a human being. And one of them said, soon as the conception starts, it can be considered a, 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 a human being. And you like, are you fucking crazy? And and it's the religious right who says who has the right to life. And what bothers me with that on the opposite end is, as soon as a child is born, oh, they okay. abandon the motherfucker. It's kind of like yeah. social responsibility. Yep. It's kind of like, no, that's yours. You're like, no, but you made me have it. Nope. It's all on you. You know, there's that's that's the disconnect for me. If you're going to control a woman's body, you controlling that existence within her, then you responsible once that child is born as well. Yeah. But but they're not doing that because it's all about, well, God has made this. Okay, so keep going with it. Keep going with it. But we yeah. don't address that. Back to your point. 
why aren't we addressing these things? You know, why aren't we addressing we giving money to these farmers because of what we did? But yet when the Green New Deal say, hey, look, we, we want, you know, wind farms and we want people to go to school yeah, but, for this. But look at it, though. So like in Georgia, mm -hmm. Republican governor. I mean, we have enough people who buy into that. So it's yeah. kind of like, eh, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Obviously in Alabama. Yeah. I, you know. Ohio, so I feel like it's is on one hand you can say, well, was it where's the quote unquote outrage? But on the other hand, obviously people who they voted in who they wanted to to subscribe to these ideologies. So you have um, evangelicals especially. Uh, I watched that. Um, yeah. What's that? Kwame Bell, whatever that guy on CNN. He has that show, and oh, he did. Okay. Uh, yeah, he talked to the um, pastors of one of these mega churches and. You know, just the—I mean, the light, the light politics. You know, they'll never mention any candidate, but they talk about values. And, you know, this person, that, and this person. So it's just the religious right is still exercising. I think they've been wanting to pass these laws for a long time. Obama yes. wasn't with that shit. So yep. now that they—they they look at Trump as a necessary evil. Yeah, this, this they're guy, gonna tolerate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah which is funny. A guy who grabs pussy and. And have three you know, wives, you know, divorce, yeah, yeah. And all the adultery, gonna, yeah, for for killing, for you know, don't kill babies, but let them grow up poor. It's just, it's just, mm -hmm. we're in a weird time. It's, yeah. it's, yeah, I mean, there's there's people that believe that kind of thing, you know. I mean, I know I always say this on every podcast, like it's the messaging, man. It's it's the, it's what because uh, you know Fox News is the number one news. Well, you know, on television, mm -hmm. they're spitting out that bullshit, and I mean, you know, that's, it's the same. So, but how do you beat that? Because that's that's, that's what I people. think. Podcast. That's why I was really. I remember mm -hmm. I was texting you guys a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago. Remember, I was mentioning like, man, because I feel like I I wish more people talked about it the way we did. Because I don't mind going up, you know, go after logic both sides. Remember, mm -hmm. I, I talked about Bill Maher, mm -hmm. and yeah. I was like. Man, that motherfucker just—he just bugs me. Like it wasn't—it wasn't necessarily a rational. I don't think I could really articulate it, but it was just kind of like he. I don't want him speaking for issues, and it wasn't necessarily like a white guy thing. It was just—he's just. I don't. He still. He, he still it. has an elitist attitude. So he, 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 he he's disconnected. You know. No, he's not know. disconnected. No, he's not. he's more elitist on that end. So he's telling you, I know nah. what you need. So I mean, it's, it's my opinion. He's yeah, swarmy. it's celebrity. Yeah. I feel like I I would use the word swarmy. Like he talks like his cadence is oh god da 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 da. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like that kind of you know mm -hmm. isn't it obvious blah blah blah. It's like well, that's you little, get this person per this point of view. It's just that's the elitist. way he comes across. Yeah, it's okay, elitist. Maybe elitist. Because he he's kind of like oh come on, don't you know that? Or whatever. Let's move on. And you kind of like yo mm -hmm. motherfucker. Just well, because you got an opinion, don't mean it's the right opinion. I mean, he's a New Yorker, you know. He kinda, yeah. He kinda, yeah, but <laughs> not, the kind of, not, not the New York I like. Yeah, but <gasps> you're gonna have that, and sometimes you have to. Sometimes I listen to Fox, even though I hate it, because I always want to know what they're talking about. Because mm -hmm. when you realize, oh my God, that's what they're saying, and you're like, mm -hmm. I I didn't realize why these people feel this way. But yep. while you ignore what they what they're talking about, you just in your own bubble saying, "Yeah, they're just stupid." I don't know, you know, they don't get it. <laughs> but they're being told one thing, and you got a yeah. set of motherfuckers that's doing that, and that's yeah. crazy when you see it. Mm -hmm. But the people who thought they really was going to get a change are regretting that. But then there's people who are content where they at, whether they're failing, whether they're getting food stamps. Or whatever they see a rich man saying things are going to be okay, and they're 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 hitching a wagon to to that this guy until I mean, they die. Mike, I hope they're regretting it. You know, well, like we just we don't really know. You know, I mean, you're not true. wrong. It's just you know they keep spitting out these these lies, these sensationalist uh, you know stories, and you know. I mean, hell, they got, okay, all right, I'm just going to give an example. You got police officers still shooting, you know, minorities, I'm not going to just say black people. Hmm. And then somehow they don't talk about it. 
Yeah. The store died. What's up, you know? Um, was that today shit. or yesterday? I mean, I just saw a video this morning where pregnant, a cop or the shot, lady? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They shot the pregnant woman. Yeah. And they come to find out people in the neighborhood were just saying there was something wrong with her mentally, you know, but it's a 45 year old woman that, that a cop couldn't control. Yeah. So, so he, he shot, shot her, her. five like, times. Fuck. Yeah, and, no, and and he got three days leave, and it's like you know, he's like you know you would think that all of the news would be talking about it. Fox mm-hmm. News would maybe do the same, but I guarantee you that's not even. So three days ago, there was another shooting in the school. Yeah, in Charlotte, right? Wasn't yeah. that Was it Charlotte or was it Denver? You know, what? it's both because I know Charlotte had a college. It's like UNC, <laughs> Damn. Charlotte but, but thing. so that's a problem because. It's gone now. So shootings, wow. shootings of minorities, children being killed. It's like, anyway, let's move on. What's Trump doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the messaging isn't, I mean, we're saying, see, this is the problem. So, so then we get tired of talking about it. <laughs> and then it's just, it becomes even normalized. Mm-hmm. And see, this is why we need somebody at the top that can bring up these conversations. And this is why we loved Obama so much because he would actually bring it up and actually would care about it. Mm-hmm. You know, it, and Obama, you, need can, you those know, people. You, you know, you just made me remember, like, I, I love how much Obama could talk. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like yeah. Bush, he, he, Bush couldn't talk that well. No, nah. he could talk enough. He'd talk you know enough. Yeah. Clinton could, even though I was, was younger, Clinton, you know, he he could talk that shit, you know, quote unquote. Yeah, I, was that was pre Obama, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But it was just like a motherfucker who can make speeches, and, and like, okay, cool, you know, like I mm-hmm. I so I don't think that. I haven't experienced that in a <laughs> even going back to Bush, you know. Unfortunately, Bush had all that baggage, mm-hmm. you know, with the wars, with and the war and stuff, yeah. Katrina, you know, for better, you know, he just had he was just dealt those cards, so. Mm-hmm. Um, so Chaz, I'm gonna break in real quick, and we're gonna take a quick break and come back because I got a question for everyone. So I mean, as what we was talking about, I really think we should kind of get into this. So tune back in to part two of Repo Rethink Politics, and we'll continue this discussion about what's going on with the Republicans. 